Hello, and welcome to my second series of videos on the making of Second Chance Heroes by Rocket City Studios. I'm Eli Platt, lead level designer on the project. And before us, we have the first level of the second world, uh, 1211, also known as Mad Mulligan's Beloved, Part 1. And so at this point in the game, you've perfectively pro progressed to the point where you're in this, this sort of fantasy underground uh, world of hobos and so it's part fantasy and it's part like that sort of like depression era mythology of hobos um and uh so we've already i've already gone and toggled off all of the lights and projections and decals and so i'm just going to clean up my editor here for you uh i am going to show you some neat editor tricks that'll help us look at this level a little bit better now the hobo colony is the first chapter of the game where i built every single level level for it myself and the little bit something special about this level is this is the oldest level in the game this is the oldest surviving level that i actually made the final cut into the game we had built a bunch of mall levels um and then we literally deleted them all so even later on when i do the missing levels series there will be mall levels in there that aren't in the game but there are levels even older than that that we literally don't have anymore because we deleted them and started over again. Um, but this, this here is the oldest level in the game, and it represents the descent into the hobo colony. So it's probably the most cave-like level. Um, and uh, I guess I'll pretty much just start with a walkthrough here. Um, this, these levels do use some negative space design, which is something new that we'll see here. Unlike the mall where everything either existed or it was abyss, but even the abyss was like a thing. Alright, and so uh, a neat little fun fact about the beginning of this level is, is right now you begin over here. But when the level was originally built, you were over here to start. And this was a coffee shop, going back to that thing that I mentioned in the last video uh, about the coffee shops being this sort of place that's everywhere and it was like this checkpoint and you could go there and maybe like switch gear out or whatever mechanics we were going to put into there and the main currency was beans now that doesn't mean that we were going to have a coffee shop in every hobo level but we at least wanted to throw one in the first hobo level to be like look coffee shops are everywhere um but later on we pulled out the coffee shop when we switched to atlasing because we didn't want to atlas in a bunch of mall assets into the uh, hobo sheet but then we atlas each level individually and we could so you'll see le levels later on and like the previous level where it was foreshadowing the hobo colony at one point we had decided that we weren't going to be able to do that and this level was built during that era and so that is well actually it was built when that era right before that era and then we ended up going back in and pulling all the mall assets out of this level which is, uh, left it essentially uh, all hobo assets um, but here we go. So you start off here in this uh, bar safe room, and one of the fun things about building the hobo colony was that I got to improvise just a lot of things in there. Like um, basically, this is just a uh, a table that falls over, and it actually is from the mall. I put that in later on. But it's a table balanced on a rock with pots as chairs, and it's using a door frame as sort of like to put the whole front together and lanterns and barrels. And so, like, it's not made out of anything that is designed to be a bar, with the exception of the sign, which was an afterthought, because I built the first bar, and they're like, oh, that's really cool, and then they made a sign for it to really drive that home, and the sign is made out of, like, a pipe, and a, a golf club, and, like, just an old wood and paint, and it's got, like, what sort of looks like Christmas lights sticking through it, and, uh... So yeah, but that's the thing about the hobos, and what made building the hobo colony really fun is that hobos, by nature, are very good at improvising and kind of doing their thing. Um, another thing I'd like to point out in this scene before I really move forward with the walkthrough is the floor here has got this hobo symbol on there, and I know Josh Drescher was really big into like wanting us to have the actual iconography used in hobo culture. And so I don't know what all the symbols are, what they mean. In fact, actually, I have to admit that I don't know them. I'm sure you could look them up. But you'll see them everywhere. Where the, This is a hobo symbol. This is a hobo symbol. And I believe this means, like, home or safe place. And, like, hobos use these, like, real in real life, uh, use these, or at least used to use these to mark 
places where you could safely sleep or where business owners were friendly towards homeless or hobo people and so yeah and i mean so the whole chapter i mean the whole game is comedy and so we do sort of like poke fun at the hobos but at the same time it's not really meant to to put them down as a people or anything or like we're not like trying to make fun of the homeless it was just like this would be really neat to go to this like hobo culture thing and like it's not really been done before and so we wanted to kind of bring that out there but also do it in our own comedy kind of way and so uh, you head out of the bar here there is under this rock here there's actually a lever and this rock originally is picked up in the air uh, so like the lever is apparent to the player and if they don't pull it if they choose not to pull it then the rock falls on it blocking that ability to go that direction um, and you come out around here and then you get this tangent you could go down on uh, where zombies jump out of the grates there's a heart attacker there you can see him you just head on down along this wall and this is really where you start seeing like the negative space and so um, you know, I'll explain the negative space a little bit better later on when there's more of it. But here you can see above this wall there's just black. So it's just, it's implying that that wall either goes up forever or um, that you can't see what's on the other side of it instead of just building a giant wall there, which is what actually was there originally. And then we decided that it was okay to have some of this negative space. And so you come down, I'll give you the zoomed out view. Um, there's a lot of elevation changes in the Hobo Colony too. Like even here, just in the beginning, you can see... There's way up there, way down here, and uh, that's one of the things I really like is elevation changes. And so I tried to work in as many of those. So there's all these little sets of stairs here and there, and these like clothesline ropes that are also like somehow load bearing. And like another thing, like the improvising, this is uh, this banner is being hung by a fishing rod sticking out of a jug. I mean that that wasn't me. I didn't do that. That's an actual model. Whereas in like the bar is just individual pieces but uh, yeah so you come on down here you blow up this you can go up this tangent to here and originally the tangents in this level were uh, required to beat the level you were trying to find the pieces of this bear bomb kind of thing for Mad Mulligan and um, you never actually or uh, rather we didn't actually do that because we didn't have the ability to save content from one level to the next level and so we pulled all those out and made all the tangents optional so then you come across this bridge here, and it's got like a like a, they're using shopping carts as mine carts. Again, mixing this sort of fantasy and hobo worlds where like they push shopping carts around maybe, and then well this is like a mine, and they're using the shopping carts as mine carts, and they've got these improvised mine tracks and things. And so you come out here and you are reintroduced to the burglar. He's got some accomplices this time, adding more mechanics to the fight. And then when you beat him, you can go one of three directions. You can either come down here for a tangent along this cliff face and fight a boss and then springboard back up. And you can also go up here into this space. And this is where I think I'll talk about the negative space. So these objects here, there is actually kind of stuff behind them and they don't really fit into the level as far as like if the background wasn't absolute black, which in some of the hobo levels we wanted to use different colors of fog. And so we got into this case where like unless we wanted to make a texture for each fog color we could only use colored fog in places where we didn't have black backgrounds and so what I'll show you here is I'll set my background color to white and you can see some of the alpha is not going to show up right and so we're seeing through the floor because of the alpha not working not because you actually see through the floor there but you can see here like here's a giant black box so that when you're running up here you don't see that stuff in the background pop in if you run up to the wall and pan your camera over. We were actually having that problem with some of these closer objects and same coming across here to make it all look kind of smooth. And So in here, like this pipe sticks way through the wall and you can see it on the other side. And we just, you know, using these black boxes to cover it up so that you can't see it. When I click on them, they turn white. Uh, ironically though, they didn't add that feature until after the Hobo Colony was pretty much finished. So. And then, like, at the end of the level here, you can see where we just extensively blocked off things with the black boxes. Part of that's because that part of the level is cut out of the next level as well. Um, but to get back to our tour here, so we've come down. Uh, let me change the background back, because it just looks prettier that way. Back on color black. And so we've come out of the safe room down here, zigzagging through this section, across the bridge. 
And so now, after you've gone down, you can go up into this cave where you've kind of got this ledge up here, and you can leap back down to the burglar again. You finally move forward past the TNT stockpile over this bridge, and you sort of get this view of the mining operations here. You can see down there. Uh, when this was built, you could actually see all this a lot better. And then we ended up bringing the fog in even closer. And it kind of... I mean, it certainly didn't ruin the view, but you got to maybe strain a little harder to see it now than you used to. And also, I think the camera... The camera was at a different angle, too. The camera was more like this when this level was built, I think. So it was, uh, now it's at a 45-degree angle, but originally it was at like a slightly different angle uh, where it wasn't quite 45 degrees. And so you sort of had this view down into this crevice slightly differently when this level was built but uh, nonetheless you come out here and you've got this wrap around tangent that kind of wraps out over into this space here where the like all these giant pillars are coming up out of the darkness and then you can pull a lever and it springs you back over and the lever turns off these flamethrowers eventually you come across this bridge and into the Roach Knight encounter, and originally there was a comic panel for the Roach Knights, but then there wasn't a comic panel for the Roach Knights, and then we were going to introduce the crazy cat lady here, and then so we ended up building this shed onto here, and there was a comic for that, and I wish I actually had that comic, and I because I could show it to you, but I don't, and I don't know where to get it at. It's probably living on an artist computer somewhere. Um, but the crazy cat lady showed up here, and then she leapt out, but then we didn't want to have a comic for the Crazy Cat Lady and the Roach Knights and the Mad Mulligan's Men all on the same level, so then we pulled her out, and then the level was too long. And So there was actually a lot of controversy about this platform. At one point, there was a trap that no longer appears in the game, like this giant hammer that knocked you backwards, and we lined the whole edge of this area up with these hammers, so it was kind of like this pinball arena where you were in the middle and the roach knights would knock you back and you'd get bounced all around the room and then we took that out and then we like i said at one point level we thought the level was too long so we took out this path here i mean it was always there but you couldn't walk across it and then we changed our mind and made it so you could walk across it and so now you can go out there and one of the scrolls is out there um but yeah this room was actually just uh, there was a lot of concepting done around this room and revisions and revisions and revisions until eventually we just sort of almost went back to square one and just put the Roach Knights in there, didn't put the comic in there, didn't put the Cat Lady in there, and uh, that's it. And then you just come out here, across, down these steps, and into this encounter here. And actually when I built this I wasn't very clear on where in the game Mad Mulligan was. And he was always intended to be in the next level, but when I built this level I thought he was going to be here. And so I built this sort of boss space for him, and then he was never put into the level because he was never intended to be. I actually misunderstood them. And so for the longest time we didn't have an encounter in this room at all. And then we like pseudo scripted one in there and it wasn't very good and they had me go in. And one of the uh, first like major scripting things that I did for them was I designed the encounter in this redesigned the encounter in this room from what it was originally which I don't even remember I think it was just more zombie clearing and then also uh, we wanted the safe rooms and so we actually had to build on this end of the level because originally it was slated to just end here but this wasn't really a safe room and so you would come out over here and this is actually the first room of the next level although it wasn't designed to be that way. We actually ended up cutting the first room out of the next level, and it just happened to fit here. And then we were like, sweet, it fits. And uh, there you have it. So that is 1-1, one, one, or one, two, one, one, uh, Mad Mulligan's Beloved Part 1. And uh, stay tuned for more. I'll put them up as I make them. Um, and I'll see you next video.